In this episode of Running the Entire Length of Africa, you join us in a sticky situation. The boys are stuck in South Africa, 50 kilometers from civilization, and they've run out of fuel. I'm alone in the middle of the Namibian desert, walking at night. And there's one other problem. I'm running out of water. stuff you know that's definitely gonna work they're gonna be here in no time at all they ended up waiting 20 minutes by the side of the road before a truck came by they couldn't help another 20 and they finally saw the light at the end of the tunnel what's good what's good? what is good that is the question what is good is that we're not going to spend any more time here on the side of the motorway in the middle of the desert. What's less good is that I've drunk a wee 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 bit of diesel. A nice truck driver on his way to Namibia did stop and give us 25 litres of diesel, which should get us where we need to go, which means Russ doesn't die in the desert tomorrow. Well, hopefully. We're, we're just back to the usual odds as opposed to heavy odds. One of them. We were one problem down, but I was still stranded and plenty more had to go right before we were in the clear. How are you doing? Good. A lot better. I'm um, frequently burping um, diesel fumes. Which Have you tried lighting them yet? I haven't tried lighting them yet. I think you should. Do you think it would be a nice party trick? Yeah, it would be cool. It would be pretty cool. Have you got your lighter on you? It's in my jeans that are full of diesel. That are full of diesel. Like just covered in diesel. And your shoes that are full of diesel. Yeah. Your socks that are full of diesel. Yeah. We talk a lot about hot showers and you can't get much hotter than a lit petrol shower. <laughs> <laughs> Russ has made it across the border, so fingers crossed all of this, it'll be alright. And we'll see him uh, tomorrow afternoon. Well, we'll find out. He's got... <laughs> and there we have it. Look at that for a sunrise. After a long night on road, solo, the sun has come up, marking the end of the night shift. To be honest, it's giving me a new wind. I ain't got an awful lot of water and it's gonna be a long time until the boys get me. There is absolutely nothing here. When I say nothing, look, literally just muddy sand and tarmac in every single direction. I have no choice but to just keep going until the boys arrive whenever that is. Right, day 18, let's get about it. It's gonna get hot as in a minute. Try and get as much done now as I can before I go through my last bit of water. So we made it out alive. We did, three. Dan's got three hours sleep. I drank diesel. What put you on, really? I mean, fantastic scene. We are off to get this hole in our windscreen fixed. Then we gotta cross the border and save Russ. Yeah. Whatever line is established right now. Have you received the message from him this morning? Oh, there's one. Yeah, it says, I am nearly dead, critical condition, iron attack sent out. So we've, we've got our work cut out for him. I wonder what Russ is doing right now. I was having issues. My water pouch had leaked and my emergency fanta had spilt too. I was literally too delirious to film as I trekked through the desert, now without water. Enough was enough. I collapsed on the roadside, waiting for any help to come by. Luckily, I got picked up after an hour and was dropped off by the nearest town. By now, I was well and truly off my nut. And we are here, Stan. First stop of the day. Yeah. We've got a lot to do while they're cracking on with this. Yeah, they're gonna do a, they're gonna do a glass for us. Hopefully, we shall see. While Russ slept, we darted about town picking up everything we needed for the border. All that was left to do was cross it. Back on road stomping. We went to a random print shop. Someone printed our label for us. We f***ing sorted the windscreen. It's beautiful and sexy. Look at it, look at it. We've got all our paperwork in order. Touch wood. Um, so hopefully we should just get waved through the border crossing front zone. As we were about to leave, we bumped into a friendly face. Seb, the lovely Brit we met a few hundred kilometers previously. We were quite lucky actually. We, one truck driver stopped for us, but he was a tanker, so he couldn't let go of any of his diesel. But another guy came through in a curtain cider and um, yeah, we managed to get out a whole one of these. 25 litres out of him. Well, yeah, yeah also like the stakes a bit because Russ obviously went across the border and he's on his own until we pick him up. Yeah, we were thinking if we can't get off this road, 
because we had no we had no proper signal either. If we can't get off this road, and we He's can't. He's sort of stranded over there. Yeah, exactly. I mean, what a story, though, man! Yeah, what a yeah, story for the first story. border oh, crossing. Fantastic. That's an exciting border crossing. Yeah. yeah. First one of the mission. We're hoping that when they open up the doors and they see the state of the inside of this thing, they won't bother to go through everything. <laughs> yeah. It also smells a bit diesely now. Cheers, fella. Have a good Cheers, one, mate. Guys. See you later, man. What a bloke said from Ryslip. We love the lad. So, big man, we are here at Viol's Drift. Yes, we are. On the Namibian border. Hopefully, we've, you know, we've got all the paperwork in order that we're aware of. Hopefully, it should be really smooth, but you never can tell with these things. Um, yeah, we'll just we'll just see what happens. Hello, boys and girls. What's happening, ladies and gents? I feel like a bread. A bread in an oven. Touch the side of the van and feel how hot it is. Didn't like that at all. Come on, Nelly. Hey, how are you? Good, thank you. Very well, thank you. Yes. Got everything? I believe so. The South African side of the border was a breeze, and we sailed through. That's what. Where are you going to? To Windhoek. Oh, okay, that's, that's it. Oh, this is a house. Yeah, it's, it's a, house. a house. It's a camping trip. Okay. Only two of you. There's two of us in at the minute. We're meeting some friends in Namibia. Yeah, they're going to fly in. Yeah, he gets the fun job of driving Thank the you. length of Africa. Oh, oh yeah. is that a fun job? You can backseat drive though, can't you, Harry? I can backseat drive. Oh. <laughs> you give up wrong directions. That's yeah. it, yeah. I give out the wrong directions. Welcome to No Man's Land, everyone. It's good to be here. Welcome to Namibia. Very, very exciting. It was the Namibian side where we encountered our first problems, and it set a worrying tone for the rest of the trip. <sighs> well, we're through. Most first and foremost, we are through. We are in Namibia. Yeah. There's been some. Uh, Stresses along the way. It wasn't all fun and games. Certainly wasn't, but we are here now. How do we summarize that? I think we summarize it by the following. Getting out of South Africa was a piece of piss. It was a piece of piss. Um, Correct. Maybe too easy. The lady in the customs office didn't really seem to think that she needed to stamp this bad boy. And basically, you can't um, import anything if you haven't first exported it and yeah we didn't get it exported we got everything in the van yeah exported but not the van itself but we sort of did I don't really understand I, I don't know why I'm talking about this I don't have a clue what's going on it makes sense in hindsight that we're all good basically until we get to Angola but we can't know that there's no way for us to know that until we show up in Oshikango on the Angolan border and they turn around and they go oh you boys up. Oh, there was just there was a there was about half an hour where we went up to the customs officials and then they just spent about 15 minutes talking to each other in really hushed tones um, and tutting and shaking their heads and like pointing at shit. And I was just going no oh my god we've got a hotel to stay at tonight we're gonna drive there now we're gonna kick back and relax after a very 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 long day. No hot. sleep. Hot day. I've been sweating like a pig. I smell like a pig. I smell like a pig rolled around in diesel. <laughs> yeah. uh -huh. After a brutal 24 hours, the team was finally reunited. How are we doing, fella? The next morning, I was back on the road, but the lack of sleep was taking its toll. All right, mate. First uh, full day here in Namibia. Looks like there's a, a nasty headwind. How yeah. you feeling about today? Today's gonna be rough. I can feel it in my bones. Body feels pretty whacked up from the last 48 hours, I can't lie. What do you do for motivation on days like today, uh, mate? Mate, there is no need for motivation because I've got to go and do it anyway, and I? So it doesn't matter whether I'm motivated or not motivated. The result is the same, I've got to get out there. When you're out here in the middle of nowhere, there's not a lot around, so. Yes, I think, mate, I'm just, I'm tired, mate. I know it, it was my idea to go through the night and not sleep but it really does take a toll on the body when you do that to yourself. What quite often happens is, I wake up and I'm like, I really cannot be bothered. And then the first 10K of the run, 
is basically me just trying to fool myself into thinking that I'm all right. And then normally it works and I have to sail through the day, not too bad. Hey, so much of life is about how you frame it. So I'll just try and frame things in a better way when, once I'm on the road. All right. Oh, me, it's boiling. I've got a long, long stretch of desert now. It's cool. gonna be about, what, over a month of desert. Yeah. So I better get used to it, really. So when are you gonna get past there? Good luck, lad. I battled through the first 35 kilometers in the blazing sun and wind. As the sun set, I'd only just reached my first stop. Finish for the day, amazing. You made good time, mate. Well played. You made really I good wish. time today. I fucking wish. What, you gotta do more? Yeah. How far, like a couple of K? No. Look at that beautiful sunset and the calming sounds of Russ's piss. 26 to go. 26, mate. Sun setting. It's much more enjoyable running at this time of day that I can't lie. Oh, when I crossed into the border, right, I had a little tiny bit of signal and I was checking my Twitter as I was, uh, as I just passed the little town that's on the other side of the border. Some Donny goes, yeah, be careful in southern Namibia, mate. There's some leopards in that lurking around and they'll be hunting at night. And then as soon as I read it, my signal went out and I just stared ahead of me and I thought, sweet, I've got to walk through this all night. <laughs> Have you seen my one-two? Your ones and twos, mate, oh, little. Mate, you didn't even see that. Look at that head movement, John. Woo! If anything, the leopard sh should be looking up on Google Rust Territory. Yeah, exactly. All right, I'm f***ing off, boys. Bang, bang. Don't go gentle into that good night. <laughs> Poetry in motion. Good luck, have fun. It's day 19. It's been a really tough day again today. That desert heat is no joke. We started a bit late, so I'm finishing late. And now I'm running in the middle of the night again. Can't see anything around me, but I know there's leopards in this area and they come out to hunt at night. So that's fun and games, isn't it? <laughs> it's nice to know there's a hot shower waiting for me at the end of this brutal shift. But I've still got about 20, Three kilometers left to go. We're gonna get that working, hopefully have a good night's sleep and resume somewhat of a normal service tomorrow. I ran my final 26 kilometers in what had turned into another brutal day, but I was blissfully unaware of what was lurking in the darkness. So we're barreling along, it's late night, you know, got not great visibility, but enough visibility <laughs> to spot something. We're spotted one of the most dangerous animals in the world. We just spotted two honey badgers. And if you know what a honey badger is, your heart will have dropped. And if you don't know what it is, you'll be like, oh, a honey badger, that sounds lovely and sweet. So honey badgers are quite small, um, but they're one of the most dangerous animals in the world because they have huge claws, um, massive teeth, an incredibly strong jaw, loose skin, um, which means that if you try and grab it, the skin will just pull away. There's nothing you can do. We'll show you some footage of, of it here, but we won't be able to show the, the most vicious footage. The thing that makes the most the most dangerous, more than their teeth, more than their claws, more than their loose skin, is their attitude. They, they are essentially- They'll fight to the death. They'll fight to the death. Once they've become aggravated, there is nothing that will stop them attacking. Russ will love that, and that'll really perk him up. Yeah. They're not going to go for you, they're not going to hunt you in the night, they've got no interest in that. But if you provoke one, then you might be in a little bit of trouble. So we're going to go and pick up Russ now. We started super late today, and it means that Russ has been running at night again. We need to avoid it as best as we possibly can in future. Yo, uh, yo. Oh, is that a bottle of Fanta I see? Right, you're not even, you're not even ready for this, mate. Nah, you're not no. even. Stan's birthday, not mine. Oh! Cheese chutney oh. burger. Oh. <laughs> Did you get before the petrol, petrol station? Oh. Good pay. Good pay stations, Frank. Unbelievable oh. stuff. We do have some <laughs> some slight concern. Okay, oh. this is what you do. You He's, fucking yeah. look in with the good <laughs> stuff. <laughs> and then you go. We're just keeping oh. it sweet, fella. That's all it is. On not one, but two occasions. Just on the drive over here. We've seen two honey badgers. No. Mate, oh, I saw were... something rustling around. I saw, you know, because when you've got a flashlight and you're running, yeah, you can see all the little cat eyes in the road. 
but you can also see animal eyes. Saw a few, but obviously you have no idea what they are. So you're just kind of hoping for the rest, hoping like it's a little bunny rabbit or something. <laughs> it's not bunny rabbit. It's not a bunny rabbit though, is it? It's actually the second most aggressive animal in North Africa. Why is that? Because I'm the first. Whee! Yeah. I was just about to say though, that evening session was so nice. I have to start doing a bit more of them. Back at the hotel, we treated Stan to a real night to remember. Is it in focus? Uh, yeah. Yeah? Nah. Maybe. Do you know? It could be in focus. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Stanley. Wow. Happy birthday to you. Do you know what? I'm just gonna I'll edit a, can a candle into this. Edit yeah, a edit yeah, a candle look at that. Oh, such a nice candle. Nice like it, hooray! You can say what you like about us, but we're f***ing thoughtful, <laughs> don't we? Yeah, you really are. <laughs> you even let me buy my own birthday cake. <laughs> How's today, Belt? Started off dog, ended superbly. It was so hot. There's just no shade cover, and I was knackered. You know that that sun going down makes the running like at least 30, 40 percent easier. Like my head torch doesn't really see that far into the distance, so I'm like running into the unknown at all times, which creates a certain level of like adrenaline running through my body, which just makes things flow quicker and better. It's just like a oh, be on your toes, lad, because could be a leopard. <laughs> lurking <laughs> i will literally have mornings where i'm like i feel wank and then i'll stop for an hour in the van and then have a great afternoon and i'm like fuck it i'm all right now it's quite nice though knowing that this is what i've because i've had a really shit day overall yeah and but through it all of it i was just going i'll probably just randomly feel good again in like a few hours <laughs> yeah and yeah. i did i had a burger yeah. felt on top of the world yeah no matter how bad it is Good times only around the corner. Uh, it depends well, if there's a honey badger in between you and the corner. We'll be in plain home eventually. Mate. Can you imagine rocking up on Christmas Day? Oh, bruv. What a, what a vibe. I actually think better than that New Year's Eve. But then then we're crossing the Algerian border on Christmas Day, which isn't necessarily a vibe. We fell asleep dreaming of the finish line, but the morning soon came and we woke up to harsh reality. Yeehaw. Yeehaw. Right. You're a cowboy now. Yeah, I'm, I'm whatever you want me to be, bro. A bit forward. <laughs> it's been dog yesterday. But now, I'm back in the game. So you're going to hit a pretty big milestone today. 1,000 K. It doesn't really mean anything to me, though, I won't lie. Why not? It doesn't change your situation in any way. You really don't believe in celebrating the small wins, do you? No. <laughs> right, just in a bit. My first 19 kilometers took me through, you guessed it, more desert. Turns out this thing is quite big. So this absolute mad lad that we uh, find ourselves living with is about to cross a thousand kilometers. What are your thoughts on that? Hard to comprehend. When you start hitting that sort of distance, unless you're the one who's actually running, it's really hard to comprehend. It's a long way, that's all I really know. It's a very long way. Yeah. Day 20, we back out here. It's a hot one again. We hitting the ones and twos. About 15k in so far today. Feeling it, feeling it already. I can't lie, this heat really just gets me. It's almost like I was ginger and not built for this. I'm gonna go and meet the boys. We're closing in on 1,000 kilometers today. I guess it's somewhat of a big landmark, although I'd be lying if I said I cared about it. We've still got over 14,000 kilometers to go, so. I don't think it calls for any kind of celebration at all. And it's a huge celebration here for Russell Cook today. The band is playing. I've been hired as the celebrity announcer for some reason and the beer is flowing as the man, the myth, the legend, hardest geezer prepares to fly across the 1,000 kilometer line in what must be the most significant moment of his career to date. He's approaching the line. Here we go. And there you have it! What a feat of sporting brilliance! Back to you in the studio, you bunch of muppets! Mate, I can just see a f***ing herd of something over there running. Can you see it? Do you know what I, like, I do enjoy seeing? Is I like seeing cows, because it just makes me think, the leopards and the f***ing honey badgers, they're, you know, they're way easier targets. So they're going to eat them before they eat me. Just got a bit 
a bit too much tenacity. Where the, the cows are stupid, everyone knows it. Mate, I'm 26 these days, so it's always going to happen at some point. But the hairline is not as strong as it used to be. Sad times for them. For all right, so I know I'm mugging you right off here. <laughs> <laughs> but at some point, I got a call up for Strictly Come Dancing. Oh, mate, that'd be the dream. Oh, mate, I'd smash Strictly. I actually love that. <laughs> bang bang. See you later. Right, we're gonna head back to our little hotel room base. Wait for this guy to finish whatever the f he's doing in Africa today. Wait, which guy? Uh, the you know the he's I can't remember his name. It's Ginger Air uh, with the receding hairline. You, that guy. Yeah. Uh, now you said the hairline. Now I know yeah. exactly who you're talking about. The one who looks like he's off to a rave. Yeah, that guy. The second leg was another breezer, but all this running stuff was making me hungry. 36 k's in today. The sun has been beating down pretty hard but in my sights I have spotted a shell garage things you absolutely love to see I'm gonna go and get myself a nice cold fizzy drink and maybe a pie oh what a day I just had a cheese and ham sandwich lovely and a um I thought it was a sausage roll it was actually like a chicken curry roll. Ooh, interesting. It was quite nice though. My, my calf is just starting to get a little bit stiff, so I'm going to give him a little bit of a rub down, lad. Left my baby oil in the hotel. We've got it's some right. vegetable oil. Vegetable oil? Yeah. We've got mm. some diesel on our clothes still you could rub yourself in. Ones, bang, ones, bang. ones and twos. Bang, bang. Step One to me and I'll and make you poo. Step to me, I'll do a poo. Not even I'll make you poo, just I'll do a poo. Yeah. Someone put a beat on for him. <laughs> oh, God, that's tough to work with that. Okay, I'm choking. Knees weak, arms are heavy, <laughs> arms spaghetti. <laughs> Preparation for our Christmas number one had tired us out. And after my final exhausting leg, we all dropped off to sleep early. How are you feeling about today? Good, actually, because it's not as hot today. Yeah, it's actually, I, I feel a bit chilly. Yeah. Honestly. Ball of piss there. Oh wow. Are you going to contribute? Just like open up his bottle of piss and just <laughs> fill up a bit more. Yeah, I think so, you should. Yeah. What catchphrase are you going to put in your daily Twitter mumble? <laughs> <laughs> Ones yeah, and yeah. twos. Ones and twos. Back on road stomping. Don't have to think too much. That's great. This is the care and attention Russ Cook puts into his work. <laughs> I hope you see some interesting stuff today. Look around and tell me there's not a few lines lurking about here. If anyone's going to find them, it's you. So good luck. <laughs> I'm ready. Oh look, shit, there's one there. Bye. The long first leg had me floating. The breeze and lack of elevation gave me the boost I needed to push through. We are waiting on stop number one of the day. We're just about to head there now. Something's gone wrong though. The van's a bit f***ed, mate. She's seen better days. I've crashed, I crashed it on the way in. And it burnt out, did it? Yeah. Do you think it'll buff out? I reckon that'll buff out. Well, just, you know there's a repair shop just down the road. Is there? Oh, we're all good then. Yeah. That was quick, mate. Yeah, mate. They have really good service. Looking good as new. Buffed out. Buffed out. Yeah, I told you it would buff out. It looked, they, mate, I wasn't sure, but those boys did a great job. They did a great polish on it as well. Mate. Good respray. Looking shiny. I'm well happy with that. I can't lie. As you can tell, there's not a lot going on today. Russ is running. I'm editing. Who'd have thunk it? I don't know whose idea it was to make a YouTube series out of this, but... <laughs> we promise something interesting will happen eventually. Yeah. Yeah, uh, maybe. You go and pick up Russ. How was that stretch? Yeah, sweet, man. Yeah? You seem in good spirits today. Yeah. The first probably 16 days, there was always, like, it was my knee, then it was my foot, then, like, my ankle and that, and, like, my legs have felt, like, f***ing decent. Lots of good times are here. Let's enjoy. I've got two litres of guava juice. Sweet. And biscuits, mate. I smashed out an easy leg and the day turned to night. The boys waited for me, relaxing in Namibia's relative safety. We've just been having a really relaxing time waiting for Russ mate, to finish his run. Back here, you know. It's beautiful. Head in hands, relaxing. I'm feeling really safe. You know, Namibia's quite empty and compared to South Africa, it's been pretty chill. Stan goes, hang about. Are those bullet holes? I said specifically, why has that bin got bullet holes? Why? That is a great, that is a better question. And um, it does. So either this was the site of violence 
or somebody's using this for target practice. I reckon target practice, mate. It's probably target Unless practice. Unless someone was in the bin. Or, you know, getting something out of the bin. When have you ever gone, I'm going to get something out of the bin, and stepped inside? <laughs> it feels slightly less peaceful than it did about two minutes ago. But we're still going to chill here. Yeah. Yeah. It's safe. It's safe. We're safe. It's safe. We're safe. We've got a wooden gun that shoots elastic bands. <laughs> 56. Strong. Point zero seven. <coughs> at six minutes and four seconds per kilometer. That is fast, mate. Yeah. It's a lot. It's a lot of things, but you know what affects it a lot is temperature and elevation gain. Everything feels good. Fantastic, mate. Blue 21 blue. days done. Blue I'm blue. sure. Blue. I can't imagine any problems that we're going to face from here on out. To be honest. Cheers for tuning in, guys.